to each and every person's life there is a destiny designed hardships and barriers lead us to where we are in life today there is not one single person in this room or any of you who are watching that hasn't faced any kind of hardship any kind of barrier be it in your educational field be it in your workspace be it with your family or in your personal life i harsh varma it's an honor and a privilege to be here today to share with you all my journey from being a footballer to turning and being adopted as the first indian shaolin warrior monk when we speak of hardships and barriers for athletes and sports people the biggest barrier or any hardship that an athlete faces is a physical trauma but we don't understand behind that physical trauma comes a mental trauma as well similarly for me i used to be a professional football player i played national international i was playing for the ac milan junior team under 16 leicester city junior team under 16 and then the indian families they forced you to complete your education so i had to stop playing i had to give my 12 boards and then follow up with that i had to complete my graduation need to get a degree so i moved to canada to pursue my bachelor's in global communication and media studies after coming back i felt there is a void a void of physical activity a void where i felt incomplete of not being able to be on the ground so i questioned myself why am i not there so i resumed back playing slowly slowly with certain local clubs in mumbai later on i came to find out that i have a physical deformity in my leg in my knee joint due to consumption of extra calcium in my body i had an extra bone that grew in my knee which is called osteochondroma i had to get operated time came when i had to get the surgery done i'm standing to start the surgery operation theater with my doctor dr tejas parik from mumbai and arugini the hospital little did i know that when the surgery was going to take place since i was completely unconscious there was a tumor attached with the bone that had grew the tumor was malign but it became a bigger deal from a small operation to a bigger operation now for an athlete who's played professionally having a knee surgery and being told post surgery that the small surgery has become a bigger surgery you can just imagine the frustration the build up of understanding that how much time a recovery would take so post surgery i got back home i had physiotherapy going on at home which was really not helping much i was crippled i was on crutches and wheelchair on my bed i used to just sit and play xbox and i was just building up my frustration i went in depression later did i understand that nobody can help me the way i want to be helped so i had to pick myself up and do my own r and d into an alternative medicine therapy my search started from different places in south of india through ayurvedic medicine to different southeast asian countries in thailand in malaysia in singapore and somebody told me about chinese medicine so chinese medicine as we know it's most traditional medicine after the indian medicinal practice system so my search narrowed to acupuncture acupressure i could not afford the fees that i had saved in beijing because it was turning out too expensive one of my martial art brothers told me about who i used to practice yoga with told me about that hey why don't you look at shaolin temple they are very spiritual they are very holistic and they do healing i said oh because i was only aware of shaolin temple being into martial arts shaolin kung fu we all have seen the famous movies of jackie chan jet li bruce lee so i did a little bit of r and d came to shaolin temple and i got in touch with the office over there 
the Foreign Affairs Office. I send them my reports, and after a few couple of back and forth, they said that I can be treated, I can be helped. Now the next step, the next hardship and barrier for me to be faced was to convince my parents. As knowing the Indian families, why do you want to go to China? Who do you have in China? We don't know anybody in China. But I had to convince them. And I had to get my way through because I felt very much connected that this is my calling, that this is something which is going to help me. And I need to get out of my bed. Basically, I need to get out of my comfort zone. Convince parents, I'm off to China. When I reached China, it was after dawn, pitch dark, and I thought actually I was going to be kidnapped. But I kept my hopes and my positivity in the place of recovery and healing. There was a very small incident that happened. I would say it's another hardship and a barrier that I face. I don't know the language. It's a remote place and nobody speaks Mandarin out there. So when nobody speaks English out there, everybody speaks Mandarin. So for me to communicate with them was difficult. So they gave me a bowl of soup. Now I am allergic to mushrooms and I didn't know in Chinese what do you say to mushroom. So I had the bowl of soup. It turned out to be a mushroom soup. And bang, I got a major allergic reaction. Anyways, that was another hardship that I faced. Because it never gets over, right? Because when you're progressing, you'll just come to know all the hardships and barriers you face. So next day in the morning, I got an allergic shot, and I went to the temple. I saw the beautiful sunrise, the serenity of the main gate, and the culture, and every texture, architecture, infrastructure, the people who were there, the monks who were there. And I felt very positive. I forgot everything that I had faced, my surgery, my depression, my soup reaction. I went to the Foreign Affairs Office, got my formalities done. And then I was in the Shaolin Pharmacy section, where I started my healing. Three to four months of intense healing of acupuncture and acupressure, with, followed with physical training, a lot of meditation, a lot of understanding of your own body, your own mind, and how you yourself can put your mind to healing which I was not aware, because as a footballer, we are always just focused on competing, competitions, winning, goals, defense, titles. So this made me start going inward. When I started going inward, I understanding my own body, where I need to put more healing. Now, when I say healing, I started cultivation of my own breath, because everything starts with your breath. So three to four months of intense healing and therapy, I became better. A lot of meditation, a lot of practice. Legs started getting better. I started having a lot of herbal medicine as well. I was promoted to being training with the Shaolin foreign students who were coming there. So a lot of foreign students come there for short courses. One month, two months, three months. Few weeks, few days as tourists. So it was a big honor for me to be coming across different ethnicities from different continents who I could share the knowledge of Shaolin, my life, my journey. I got to know that they've been practicing since so long. Many people come from different hardships and barriers that they have faced, that they have only so much of funds. And mind you, since we speak of funds, I was actually saving my funds to go for this world-famous music festival called Tomorrowland. So very little did I know that my funds are going to be coming in news of my own recovery. Cut to be coming back to training with the foreign students. I surrendered myself, and I loved this practice so much, and I was just wanting to be submerged in it. I wanted more. I was not happy with what I was getting. I just wanted more and more. You know how you get hungry? I was getting hungrier. I started observing our Shifu, the master of the foreign students. He was not too strict with us. I got one of my brothers of, from Costa Rica, Shaolin brothers from Costa Rica. I told him, hey, buddy, can you please help me write a letter in Chinese? I'm not feeling Shifu is very uh, strict. He's too easy on us, because we come from India, so we know the teachers, the coaches, how strict they have been, our families. So for the West people, it gets a little intimidating. 
So I told him, please write me a letter. And ex I expressed in the letter certain things which I don't want to say right now, which I will come to it later on. So I gave, him, gave the letter to my Shifu, and the Shifu saw and he laughed. He's like, <laughs> he's like, hey. He's like, okay, good. He's like, okay, go train. He just smiled. And he smirked at me, and his eyes had this, that this guy is different. And I was just happy that he smiled, and then he took me in a positive way, and I started training. So intense training started happening post that. And I think in the ninth and 10 months of me completing my time as a foreign student in Shaolin Temple, I started translating for a lot of students started coming. The first thing I prepared myself was that I had to learn the language, Mandarin. So I trained myself in language. I trained myself in being imparting the knowledge of Zen Buddhist philosophy, trained myself in being part of the medicine and the pharmacy section. So these are the three pillars of the Shaolin Temple. The Zen Buddhism, Kung Fu, and medicine. 1.6 years, one year, six months, finished. My time came for me to leave because my savings got over. My funds ran out. Now what do I do? My next hardship and barrier, what is it? I told them that I will come back once I have saved again. Meanwhile, whatever I have trained, I will continue back home. They thought that he's going to go back. He will come back whenever. But why not we keep him? Why not we take him in our, in our team and make him amongst us? Because he speaks Mandarin. His Kung Fu is decent. And his commitment to learn the culture is we can see his dedication. So you can see the venerable head of our Shaolin Temple, the abbot of the Shaolin Temple, Xu Yongxin, our Da Shifu, our big master, and a warrior monk leader, and my first Shifu of the, of the Shaolin uh, foreign group. They all had a meeting, and then they proposed to me, adopting me as a Shaolin warrior monk. When this news came to me, I was ecstatic. I was speechless, and I was filled with immense joy. I just said, I just bowed my head. I was like, thank you. That's all I said. My next hardship and barrier was to go back home to renew my visa and face my family and tell them that, hey, mom and dad, I've gotten an opportunity to be adopted as a monk. So you can imagine what a family, an Indian family, would think when their son, who is 20, 3 and a half, 24 years old, says that I want to become a monk. The first reaction was, are you out of your mind? So this means that you're never going to marry. We will never have grandchildren. So all those things that you all can expect from an Indian family that came out. But for me, my only and one whole and sole goal was that this is a lifetime opportunity that no, no foreigner has ever gotten. Forget it, Indian. No non-Chinese has ever gotten. And I wanted to take this up. And once I started feeling of this whole surrenderance, then I started getting accepted. So I think this was my calling. And there was this Hindi film drama at home with my parents. And um, I took off. I went back to China. Um, because I personally believe till the time you don't take risk, you will not know your true value and worth. So I took the risk. I went back to the temple. I started my duty as a Shaolin warrior monk. Now, what are the duties of a Shaolin warrior monk? Being a part of ceremonies, being part of the prayers, being part of the rituals, every festivals that we celebrate, everything that we do to promote the Shaolin culture, the Buddhist philosophy, serving the tourists who come to the temple, farming where we have our own fields that we grow our own crops, we go plowing, we go harvesting, we go weeding. My basic duty and the most important one was of a translator. So I translated from Mandarin to English, Mandarin to Hindi, Mandarin to Spanish, traveling for shows around the world, being part of the Shaolin Warrior Monks elite group. 2017, January, July to August came a time where we were adding the fourth pillar of the Shaolin culture, which was the Zen archery. So Zen archery, we were sent to Guangzhou for four months of intense training, 10 hours a day. Now, while training, I discovered this is south of China, and the temple is in north. So while I was in the south of China, I discovered there are different styles of other martial arts as well, just apart from the archery training. So I thought to myself that, wow, the, the extraction process, the core process, the core element of this martial arts is very similar to ours, but the style is different. 
So why not look into learning this? I was very rigid with my thinking of that no Shaolin is, you know, I want to do only Shaolin, Shaolin, Shaolin. No. I started learning one, two styles. I started observing different styles as well. I went to my Shifu. I went back after training. I told my Shifu. I was like, Shifu, there are so many different styles. So should I be open to learning all? And my Shifu said the one famous quote by Master Bruce Lee, absorb what is useful, reject what's not, and have uniquely of your own. That gave me much more confidence. That gave me a window, a door, to look into myself. I started meditating in a more deeper sense. I understanding what I wanted from learning so much, gaining so much knowledge. Why am I gaining so much knowledge? What is my next step? As I started looking into it in a more deeper sense, I found my purpose. I came back from my last couple of shows back to the temple and I come across a lot of tourists. And there was the famous Jackie Chan stunt team members who were there. Before that, I had decided that I will go to South Korea or somewhere in Japan to do martial arts training. When I met the Jackie Chan stunt team people, I told them, hey, I've seen you guys on YouTube. And they were like, yeah, yeah, oh, you're a monk. I said, yes, I'm, I'm India, I'm an Indian. I've come from India, I've been here in the last four, four and a half years. And um, they're like, oh, you should come to America. We are training for this film called uh, Bleeding Steel. We are doing this training rehearsals. You should join us and it'll be nice to exchange with you, learn the authentic Shaolin training and you, know, you can learn from us all the modern stuff. So I decided that I would travel to America. There is the famous Jackie Chan stunt team members and martial club stunt team consist of the three main brothers, Andy Lee, Brian Lee, and Daniel Ma. So I trained there for 1.6 years and I came back to India. And after I came back to India, there was a global pandemic that hit in 2020, March. I came back to India in Jan, Feb. After I came back, it gave me a lot of time to prepare for opening my Shaolin Cultural Center. Every country has a branch of their school in their country. So India's official cultural center is with me. There were a lot of hardships that everybody has faced in the pandemic. But it is a privilege for me that I carry this culture in a very wholesome and a cultural way. And I'm spreading the culture. And my life is now being continued post my services in the temple. So my life has come and been a roller coaster. There's a lot of transformation from becoming a footballer to a Shaolin warrior monk. And post this, what I just want to share with you all is that till the time you don't get out of your comfort zone, you all will not know your value, your worth. There are a lot of things that we all plan to do, but certain things are designed by a destiny. So when you commit to something, commit to it in a very wholesome way. And that's how my life came from being footballer to a Shaolin warrior monk. Thank you.